Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, the dynamic duo, won our hearts with their talent and adorable smiles while they were making their television appearances. The television show Full House was the catalyst for the rise to fame of the identical twin sisters. They were among the most successful and influential fashion designers of their time because they capitalized on their fame and talent to build a fashion empire that was worth multiple millions of dollars. They experienced this success while growing up in the spotlight. Despite the fact that they have such a significant influence, the twins have continued to struggle with significant personal issues both on and off screen. So, where exactly did everything go wrong? We invite you to watch this video with us as we reveal the tragic story of the Olsen twins, which is so heartbreaking. But before we delve right into the sad tragedy of the Olsen twins, let's first trace it back to their early lives and careers. Early life and career of the Olsen twins. The Olsen children, Mary, Kate, and Ashley, were born on June 13, 1986 in the city of Sherman Oaks, California. They came from a chaotic family that included an older brother named Trent and a younger sister named Elizabeth, who went on to have a successful career in the entertainment industry. Their parents, David Olson and Jarnett, eventually divorced in 1995, which resulted in the addition of half-siblings Courtney Taylor and Jake, who were born as a result of their father's second marriage. The twins' lives were anything but typical from the time they were babies until they were adults. When they were only six months old, they were given the opportunity to play the part of Michelle Tanner on the popular sitcom set on ABC called Full House. Jeff Franklin, the creator of the show, was enthralled by the twins when they were participating in an open casting call. He remarked on how unusually comfortable they were in the presence of strangers. Mary-Kate and Ashley took turns playing the role of Michelle throughout the entire eight-season run of the show, which came to an end in 1995. This was done in order to keep the show in compliance with child labor laws, which limited the amount of time a child could be employed. Although Mary-Kate and Ashley experienced a meteoric rise to fame, it came at a significant personal cost to them. At the age of three, their parents had already hired Robert Thorne to serve as their manager. He was also instrumental in the establishment of Dual Star, an entertainment company that was responsible for turning the twins into a brand. Their influence was expanded beyond the realm of television to encompass other mediums such as movies, books, music, and merchandise. By the time they were six years old, the Olsen twins had achieved the remarkable feat of becoming the youngest producers in the history of Hollywood. Self-made millionaires by the time they were 10 years old, the twins' childhoods were anything but typical, despite the fact that they were successful. While the Olsons were starring in Full House, they also started making appearances in films for video and television as characters that were distinct from one another. To Grandmother's House We Go, the first film of its kind, was released in 1992 and featured cameos from a number of other actors who had previously appeared in Full House. In the year 1993, the Olsons established the company known as Dual Star, which would go on to produce the films and videos that would come after it. These films and videos included Double Double Toil and Trouble, 1993, and How the West Was Fun, 1994. In 1994, the first episode of a musical mystery video series called The Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley was released, and the series continued until 1997. Following the conclusion of the television series Full House in 1995, the Olsons made their debut in the acting world with the film It Takes Two, which also featured Steve Guttenberg and Kirstie Alley. In the same year, they launched a second video series called You're Invited to Marry Kate and Ashley's, which continued to release new episodes until the year 2000. After that, the Olsons made a guest appearance on an episode of All My Children the following year. In 1997, they made another appearance on the show Sister, Sister, this time as guest stars in an episode. Additionally, in 1998, the twins made their return to series television with the addition of another ABC sitcom called Two of a Kind. Christopher Sieber played the role of their character's widowed father in this sitcom. However, the series continued to air on cable television in reruns for a number of years after it had only aired for one season. Furthermore, the year 1998 witnessed the release of Billboard Dad, which was the initial installment in a series of direct-to-video films that featured the Olsons. The Challenge, the last film of this kind, 
was released in the year 2003. In an episode of Seventh Heaven that aired in the year 2000, the Olsons played the roles of Bad Girl Sue and Carol Murphy. So Little Time, a live-action sitcom that was initially broadcast on Fox Family but was subsequently rebranded as ABC Family, and Mary Kate and Ashley in Action, an animated series that aired on ABC's Saturday Mornings, were the two new shows that they starred in the following year. Despite the fact that Mary Kate was nominated for a Daytime Emmy for her performance in So Little Time, both shows were canceled after only one season. Early in 2004, the Olsons provided their voices for cameo roles in an episode of The Simpsons. In this episode, they narrated Marge's book on tape, which was titled The Harpooned Heart. In addition, they starred in their second feature film, New York Minute, which was also their final film together and Ashley's last acting role. Both of these films were released in the same year. Both in film and on television, Mary Kate continued her acting career. Up until the year 2000, they had a fan club that was called Mary Kate and Ashley's Fun Club. Members of the club were able to purchase collectibles and photographs. The fan club magazine Our Funzine, a collectibles catalog that included items such as t-shirts, posters, and key rings, as well as surprise gifts such as key rings or book excerpts, lyric sheets to their songs, a school folder, a membership card, a full-sized poster, two black and white photographs, one of each girl, and a color photograph with reprint autographs were included free of charge with each subscription. Up until the year 1998, advertisements for this club were placed at the beginning of their films. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Mary Kate and Ashley were extremely well liked by students in the preteen age range. A large number of products, including movies, clothing, shoes, purses, hats, books, CDs, fragrances, and makeup, magazines, video and board games, dolls, posters, calendars, and even telephones and CD players were sold under their brand. The majority of their products were aimed at the tween demographic. In the years 2000 to 2005, Mattel produced fashion dolls based on the Mary Kate and Ashley brand, complete with outfits and accessory packs. What did the sisters' lives consist of? particularly when they were not being filmed, and what kind of tragedy did they have to deal with? To find out, continue to watch here. The life of the twins, secretly hidden from the public eye. The transition from Full House to life after the show was not only about leaving a beloved show, but it also involved navigating the disintegration of a family. Due to the fact that their parents, Dave and Jarnett Olson, divorced in 1995, the twins' previously established sense of stability was shattered. This was not a typical breakup. Rather, it occurred at the same time as the conclusion of the television show Full House and the dissolution of the very empire that had made them famous all over the world. Even prior to his departure from the mortgage industry for Hollywood, their father, Dave, had already begun a romantic relationship with Mackenzie, a colleague from his time working in the industry. Having an affair was the cause of the breakup with Jared. Dave tied the knot with Mackenzie a mere month after the news of the divorce became public. Within the family, there was a whirlwind that caused division. It was a decision that spoke volumes about the emotional rift between Ashley and Mary Kate that Ashley chose to skip the wedding in order to stay with her mother while Mary Kate attended. In an effort to maintain his composure, Dave stated that the girls were doing well, but Jarnett chose to keep her feelings to herself. In spite of the chaos that was occurring at home, the twins made an effort to maintain a sense of normalcy. In an interview that took place in 1996, Mary Kate mentioned that she and her siblings attended school, played with their friends, and had sleepovers. They were students at Campbell Hall Episcopal School, a private institution located in Studio City that fostered an environment that fostered inquisitiveness and self-discovery. But let's face it, their lives were anything but typical under any circumstances. They prioritized their careers above all else. How would you feel if you had to miss your senior prom because you were required to host Saturday Night Live? Indeed, that is precisely what took place. They were not promoting their film New York Minute by riding in limousines or wearing elaborate dresses. Rather, they were promoting the film. They even made a joke about it during their Sunday Night Live monologue. The Olsen sisters, Mary Kate and Ashley, did not have an easy time growing up famous. While they were in the process of maturing into adults, they were frequently confronted with difficulties and challenges. What kinds of challenges did they face, and how did they manage to overcome or overcome them? Well, let's find out. Adulthood is a difficult time for him. 
During their childhood, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olson encountered a number of obstacles, particularly following the divorce of their parents and the pressures that come with fame. Over the course of the early 2000s, Mary-Kate was plagued by serious health problems, including rumors that circulated about her health circumstances. An eating disorder was the reason she checked herself into a rehabilitation center before she turned 18 years old. Her father and therapist intervened because they were concerned for her life. Despite her best efforts to keep her struggles a secret, they were brought to light when the twins made an appearance on the show hosted by Oprah Winfrey. The situation became more difficult as a result of Oprah's persistent questioning about the rumors. Mary Kate, who is known for being able to conceal her pain effectively, had an interview in 2008 in which she discussed her anorexia. She admitted that it was difficult for her to seek help and to be honest with herself. A combination of Mary Kate's extreme thinness and the image of a partying person that the media portrays led to the spread of rumors that she was addicted to cocaine. It was even brought up on Saturday Night Live, where the twins made a joke about it by shouting, You're so skinny, eat a sandwich. On the other hand, the truth was quite grave. Due to the fact that Mary Kate's parents were still her legal guardians, she had very little control over her treatment when she was 17 years old. In the midst of her personal struggles, she decided to pursue outpatient treatment during her first semester at New York University. However, this plan also failed to materialize. Over the course of her life, Ashley Olson has also been confronted with significant health challenges. A diagnosis of late-stage Lyme disease was made for her in the year 2015, which made it difficult for her to work and kept her away from the mainstream media. A difficult time that highlighted her resiliency was marked by the fact that the disease caused her to appear exhausted and frequently in a depressed state of mind. As a result of a problematic plastic surgery procedure, Ashley experienced yet another serious health scare in the year 2016. As a consequence of the procedure, necrosis occurred, which led to swelling, bruising, and discoloration of her frontal region. It was necessary to administer intensive oxygen therapy in order to treat the condition, and as a result, she was profoundly affected by the experience. Ashley continues to be open to future procedures, albeit with a greater degree of caution in her decision-making, despite the trauma she has experienced. This was just the beginning of the challenges that the twins would face in the future, as time was getting closer. At least while they were attending college, it would appear that life did not treat them fairly. Can you tell me about the twins' experiences in college? Have they been able to lead a life that is typical? In the following moments, we will reveal these specifics. The college life experiences of the Olson twins. Mary Kate and Ashley Olson looked forward to beginning their college careers at New York University in September of 2004. They made an investment in a penthouse in the West Village that was worth $7.3 million, but they never moved in because they chose to avoid the typical dorm life. As soon as it became public knowledge that Mary Kate, in particular, was skipping classes, their hopes of attending college were quickly dashed. It was speculated that she might enroll in an independent study program in order to maintain a healthy balance between her life in New York City and Los Angeles. After some time, Mary Kate decided to take a leave of absence, which led to speculation that she might go back to treatment for her eating disorder, despite the fact that she already had a solid support system in place. Soon after, Ashley did the same thing, as she felt that the pressures of their fame made it unsafe for her to continue her education. In 2007, Spencer Pratt, who is known for his role on The Hills, revealed that he had made $50,000 by selling a photograph of Mary Kate drinking at a party. This led to a feud between the two of them, during which Pratt made hurtful comments about Mary Kate. As an illustration of how their lives were constantly being scrutinized and exploited by the media for the purpose of making a profit, this was just one example. Because their lives had been the subject of tabloids for a significant amount of time prior to enrolling in college, dropping out of New York University was not only for the sake of privacy, it was also for the sake of their survival. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to successfully integrate into college life due to the fame that had brought them success. The public's fascination with them, combined with the endless pursuit of scandal by the tabloid industry, left them with very little privacy. Mary Kate and Ashley persisted in managing their business empire despite the difficulties they faced, beginning with the divorce of their parents and continuing through their teenage years. 
The Olsons were media darlings who went on to become fashion icons, despite the fact that they produced a number of films and specials that were released directly to video. As a result of their celebrity status, they were frequently more well-known than for their work in the film industry. Both Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen were subjected to a high level of surveillance by the media, which resulted in the loss of the limited privacy they enjoyed. What was the purpose of the media's investigation into the twins, and what did they discover? Be sure to keep watching to learn more. Media Scrutiny As Mary-Kate and Ashley approached their 18th birthdays in the early 2000s, the rise of the internet intensified public curiosity, which led to the creation of intrusive websites that counted down to their legal adulthood in ways that were unsettling. In addition to the difficulties they faced as child stars transitioning into public teenage life, they were subjected to increased sexualization, which was a different kind of nightmare. Every facet of their lives was scrutinized, and the results were frequently distorted into stories that were not true. Ashley had a first-hand experience with this when she filed a lawsuit against the National Enquirer for $40 million over a photo and headlines that gave the impression that she was using drugs. However, despite the publication's subsequent apology, the damage had already been done. Because of the unrelenting attention from the media, they were subjected to this intrusive scrutiny on a regular basis, which made it nearly impossible for them to live a normal life. The routines of the Olsen twins were exposed. Throughout the years, the smoking habits of the Olsen twins have become a topic of fascination for the general public. When they were first interviewed by Rolling Stone in 2003, they stated that they did not smoke or drink. However, when they began taking cigarette breaks while dressed in couture, this marked a shift in their behavior. It is possible that the media became obsessed with this habit, which contributed to the mystique surrounding them, as smoking together became a rare glimpse into their private bond. In spite of the fact that they were no longer in the public eye, these photographs of them as they remained cool and detached, always smoking, remained. This sentiment was captured by Rachel Handler of Vulture, who questioned the reason why photographs of the twin smoking seemed to make them feel strangely comforted. A more critical stance was taken by Life and Style, which concluded that their smoking was connected to their appearance. Even though page six described the bowls of cigarettes that were present at Mary Kate's wedding, which gave the impression that their habit was almost defiant and a small act of defiance against the unrelenting scrutiny, it also gave a hint about the stress and pressure that they were under. It was clear that Mary Kate was dedicated to smoking, even to the point of putting her professional reputation at risk at times. This exemplifies their addiction despite the hectic pace of their individual lives. As the twins progressed through their careers, how did they handle their romantic relationships? Well, let's find out. Relationships, marriages, and divorce. From the artist Nate Lohman to Max Winkler, the son of actor Henry Winkler, and up until her ex-husband Olivier Sarkozy, Mary-Kate Olsen's romantic life has always been a source of fascination or curiosity. Nevertheless, one rumored romance stands out due to the tragic way in which it ended. Rumors began to circulate in 2008 regarding Mary-Kate's possible romantic involvement with the actor Heath Ledger. Reports indicate that they had been dating in a casual capacity for approximately three months, during which time they took pleasure in each other's company and shared a passion for Marlboro Reds. Their relationship was significant in Mary-Kate's life, despite the fact that it was only brief. Heath Ledger was discovered unresponsive in his flat, which left the entire world in a state of silence. According to the New York Times, Diana Wilson, the masseuse who was responsible for discovering Ledger, telephoned Mary-Kate on two separate occasions before dialing 911. Mary-Kate, who was in California at the time, declared that she would dispatch her personal security to provide assistance. This event brought to light the sense of intimacy that existed between them. In the event that Ledger did not respond, Wollosin dialed 911 and made an attempt to bring him back to life. Unfortunately, it was already too late. A shadow was cast over Mary-Kate after it was determined that Ledger's death was the result of an accidental overdose of medicines prescribed by a doctor. It was reported that Mary-Kate refused to cooperate with investigators after the death of Ledger, despite the fact that she would not be protected from any future prosecution. The eventual decision to drop the case was made because there were not enough viable targets for the investigation. In October of 2017, Ashley Olsen started a relationship with the artist Louis Eisner. 
Eisner is the son of Eric Eisner, who was a philanthropist and a former president of the Geffen Company. Eric Eisner was also the founder of the Young Eisner Scholars Educational Program. Olson was spotted wearing a ring in July 2019, which sparked speculation that she was engaged to be married. On December 28, 2022, they exchanged their vows in Bel Air, Los Angeles, and five years later, in 2023, they became parents to a son. Olson has had romantic relationships in the past with a number of different people, including Matt Kaplan, a former quarterback at Columbia University who is now a producer, Scott Sartiano, a restaurateur, Jared Leto, an actor, Lance Armstrong, a cyclist, and Justin Bartha, who is also an actor. Despite the fact that Mary-Kate Olsen's marriage to Olivier Sarkozy, a French banker, was frequently criticized for awkward public displays of affection, the couple's private life was far from ideal. Despite Mary-Kate's intention to file for divorce in April 2020, her plans were temporarily put on hold because of COVID-19, which places restrictions on the filing of divorces in New York City. She made a hasty request for an emergency order in the month of May, alleging that Sarkozy had terminated their lease without her knowledge and was attempting to evict her from their flat. According to reports, Sarkozy imposed a stringent deadline on her to remove her belongings, which was made more difficult by the quarantine regulations that were in place in the city. It is said that he did not pay attention to her when she requested an extension. While Mary-Kate was dealing with this stressful situation, she decided to seek refuge with Ashley and her friends outside of the city. Even though she was going through a difficult time, she had a prenuptial agreement that offered her some protection. At the same time that she was dealing with her own personal struggles, the twins were also dealing with another devastating loss. A sudden and unexpected death occurred in January 2022 for their cherished television father, Bob Saget. Saget had always maintained a close relationship with his television daughters, including Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, despite the fact that they were not present in the reboot of Fuller House. He continued to be protective of them and maintained consistent communication with them. Upon learning of his passing, the twins conveyed their deepest condolences, describing him as the most loving, compassionate, and generous individual they had ever known. In order to show their appreciation for the significant impact he had on their lives, they went to observe his funeral. Once Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen had successfully navigated the challenges of fame as well as their own personal struggles, they made the decision to withdraw from the public eye. The sudden retirement Mary-Kate Olsen made her debut as a solo performer in the film Factory Girl, which was released in 2006. In the beginning, her scene was not included in the theatrical release. However, it was included in the unrated version that was released on DVD and Blu-ray. In the year 2007, she appeared on the television show Weeds in a role that was recurring. When asked about their future collaboration in the film industry, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen stated that if they were to work together again, it would be in the capacity of producers. On the ABC comedy series, Samantha Who, Mary-Kate Olsen appeared as a guest star in the year 2008 portraying a character who is prone to self-destruction and whom Samantha makes an effort to help. She also had a role in the movie The Wackness, which was released in the same year. The year 2011 marked her final acting project, which was an appearance in the film adaptation of the novel Beastly by Alex Flynn. In March of 2012, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen both mentioned that they were interested in retiring from acting in order to concentrate on their careers in the fashion industry. During their conversation, they discussed their future endeavors in the fashion industry, which included the possibility of opening a store. In the year 2015, it was revealed that John Stamos would be producing and co-starring in Fuller House, a spin-off of Full House that would feature the original cast of the franchise. However, Mary-Kate and Ashley made the announcement in May of that year that they would not be returning to their role as Michelle Tanner once again. One month prior, Nickelodeon had successfully acquired the rights to the video library belonging to the twins. However, what drove them to make such a choice in the first place? And what kind of endeavor did they undertake after they were no longer in the spotlight? Maintain your attention to find out. It is a leap. The transition from actors to fashion moguls is taking place. Ever since Mary-Kate Olsen had a small part in the film Beastly in 2011, the Olsen twins have become a mystery in Hollywood. 
They are frequently seen wearing oversized couture and with their hair styled in a tousled manner. Their appearances are extremely infrequent, with the exception of carefully selected events such as the Met Gala or Fashion Week, where they promote their respective fashion labels. These days, the Olsen twins are better known for their appearances in fashion magazines than they are on the big screen. We're used to being on the other side of the camera and managing the process, so it's hard for us to do photo shoots now," Mary-Kate said in an interview with the edit of Netta Porter in 2017. Although their transition from acting to fashion moguls has been smooth, it is evident that they prefer to be in the background rather than in the spotlight. Their rare appearance on Sephora's Instagram in 2016 to promote their brand Elizabeth and James was both chic and momentous, but it is unlikely that they will replicate such public displays on a regular basis. Ashley Olsen mentioned in the edit that they avoid that world and prefer a more sheltered existence. In contrast to many of their Hollywood peers, the Olsons do not participate in social media. Embracing their roles as fashion designers, Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen run a billion-dollar empire while keeping their personal lives intensely private at the same time. As fashion moguls, they have built a luxury brand that commands attention and respect in the industry. Their retreat from the public eye extends to their roots as well, as they chose not to participate in the reboot of Fuller House, which disappointed many friends and followers. The Olsen twins' story took a more negative turn as they grew up in the constant spotlight. Do you believe that the Olsen twins' successful accomplishments were worth all of the struggles that they had to go through? Would returning to the spotlight be the best option, or would it not be? In the comments section below, please share your thoughts with us. We would like to express our gratitude for watching this video and hope that you found it to be interesting. Remember to click the next video that appears on your screen to catch up on the stories of your favorite celebrities. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.